is the chizok. It's never too late. All right, I will say good morning. Exciting day today. New parak in Mesech Eschulen. We are starting the second chapter, Daf Chof Zayin. Our shir this morning is dedicated by Leah Sol in memory of, excuse me, I'm sorry, in the Schus of Arafu Shalema for her daughter, Ilana, Ilana Bas Esther. We hope that on the merit of our Talmud Torah, she together with Kol Choli Yisrael, have Arafu Shalema. Today is also the yard site of Rabbi Price Zichron Livracha, and so we dedicate our learning Le'ilui Nishmas. Harav Shlomo Aryeh ben Moshe was the second Rav of the Shul for almost a quarter of a century. We have incredible Akaras Atov to his memory, to his Avoda. We hope that in the merit of our Talmud Torah, the Shem will have an Aliyah and the family in No. Okay. All right, we'll say let's uh, let's begin. Today's daf is Chavzayin, new parak, new parak. Let's begin. Se- says the Mishnah, Hashochet Echad Ba'ov. So we'll say. So let's let's begin. So remember, we're talking now about the Shechita. We're going back to the halachos of Shechita. So Hashochet Echad Ba'ov, Ushnayim Bebehema. We'll say if a person goes ahead and shechts one simon in an oaf. And two in a behema. So we'll say. So let's let's analyze this now. So we're going. We're actually we're going to start this discussion, but we're going to see that they're going to move off a little bit of the technicalities of shrita to go ahead and focus on some basic halachos. I should say we're going to move off some of the mechanics of shrita and focus on some of the basic yisodos. We'll say if a person shechts one simon in a bird and two in a behema, shrita sokshera. Ultimately, again, his shechita is kosher. Verubo shel echad kamahu. And ultimately, again, the majority of one simon, the majority of one simon is enough. So we'll say, so again, we'll see exactly how to explain all of these phrases in the Gemara. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, at es Rabbi Yehuda says that shechita is not good until you go ahead and you shech the vridin. Now, we'll say, Rashi says over here, the vridin are chute hatzavar, shemekalchen es hadam. They are things in the, well, I'm using a technical term, things in the neck uh, ultimately contain an incredible amount of blood. Now we're going to discuss what Rabbi Huda is referring to. Are we referring to birds? Are we referring to behemoths? Are we referring to both? What part of the body is that? We'll discuss this, I think, tomorrow or the next day. Chatsi echad ba'of, the chatsi echad, the echad ve chatsi bebehemoth, shchita sabsula. Well, say if a person only shechts half a simon in a bird, or one and a half simonim in a behema, shchita so psula. Ultimately, again, his shchita is pasal. So we'll say again, we'll see what the meaning of this is. After all, the Mishnah already just told me that halacha lamaisa, I need to shecht the rove of one simon in a bird and the rove of two simonim in a behema. So what does it mean that I'm only shechting one half in a bird or one half in a behema? Of course, that's going to be pasal. Why the need for the redundant statement? We'll discuss that. Rov echad ba'ov. But if you shecht the majority of one simon and an oaf, and one simon and two simon, excuse me, in a behema, ultimately again the shechita is kosher. Good. So we'll say. So this is the Mishnah. Says the Gemara. Hashochet di eved in lechat chilolo. So the Gemara now says as follows. Hashochet. So remember again. We'll say this. This is a little bit of a throwback to the first Gemara in the Masechta. So hashochet. We'll say the lashon of hashochet. If one shechted. Is a lashon of bidi eved. Sashochet di eved in lechatchila lo. So we'll say ultimately again when it says hashochet, that sounds like bidi eved, not lechatchila. So listen to this. Shnayim, shnayim bebehema lechatchila lo. At kama lishchot velezel. So we'll say. So the Mishnah reads as follows. It says hashochet echad bebehema. Excuse me. Hashochet echad ba'of ushnayim bebehema. So if a person goes ahead and shechts one simon in an oaf. Two simanim in a behema. The lashon of hashochet is a lashon of bidi eved. So what it sounds like is bidi eved. If you shechted two simanim in a behema, your shchitas kasher. To which the gemara says, how could that be? So if if two simanim is the bidi eved in a behema, then what? Then what? Then what's the lachatrila? How much more can you shecht in two simanim? So the gemara says as follows: ibay sema, a echad bov. So we'll say one possibility is. The Lashon of Bidi Eved, Hashochit, Hashochit of Lashon Bidi Eved is actually an oaf. 
is actually in the bird. That although, technically speaking, one only has to shecht one simon in the oaf, that's right, that's, that's bidi evad. L'chatchila, it's possible that one should shecht two simonim in an oaf. We'll, we'll come back and discuss that. Dibay sima, aruba shal echad kamo. Or I the other possibility is on the concept of rove. So what the Mishnah did tell me is that halacha lamaisa, shechting or cutting the rove of a simon is the equivalent to cutting the simon in its entirety. The Mishnah, the Mishnah essentially tells me that din is bidyavad lechatchila. Ideally, one should cut the simon in its entirety. So if it's by an oaf, if it's by a bird, one should cut one simon in its entirety, and if it's by a behema one should cut both simonim in their entirety. Amr Rav Kahana, so Rav Kahana said as follows, Minayim l'shchita shehim in atzavar. Ultimately, again, how do we know that shchita is from the neck? How do we know that? So we'll say, so now what we've established is as follows. We've established one simon by an oaf, two simonim by a behema. The majority of a simon is tantamount as if you cut the entire simon. Fine. Now we ask a more fundamental question, which is going to take us actually the bulk of this daf. From where do you know that shechita is done from the neck? Now, as well said, there are many ways to kill an animal. From where do you know that slaughter is done from the front of the neck of an animal? So the Yimar Shenemar, the shachat as ben habakar. Because as well said, the pasuk says, "You shall shecht the ben habakar." By Karbanos, you shall shecht the ben habakar. Mimakom shesach chito. We'll say from the place in this case, shesach means from where it bends. The place from where it bends, i.e. the neck, where the animal could bend its head, from the place where it bends, sham chitahu. There you shall purify it. Now Rashi says, chitahu, hechshiru la'achila v'tiharuhu. Lishnach, rina chitahu, hotzi es So we'll say, so in this case, shach means to bow, chitahu means clean it out or purify it. From there you shall clean out to purify it from its blood. So the Gemara says, Mimai, the high chito. So, first of all, just to understand, this lotion of shchita, the Gemara's understanding, is a contraction, right? Mimakum sheshach, sham chito. From the place where it bends, i.e., the neck where it bends, sham chito, that is where you should purify it from. So the Gemara says, Mimai, the high chito, lishna, didakuyehu. From where do you know that chito is a lotion of cleansing? Tichsiv, the chita, and sabayis. Because they will say the Pasuk says, Vechita, Vechite as Habayis. Now, again, this is literally talking about Sarah as Habayis. You shall cleanse the house. So, from here, you see that this Lashon is a Lashon of cleansing. Vibay say, Mamehacha. We'll say the other possibility is from here. Tichat ini be'ezov ve'etar. So, we'll say these are all the Shonos of Chita that ultimately, again, have a connotation of cleansing. The imam is navo. So I say, I. Why don't you say that ultimately again? You shech the animal from its tail. As well say the tail <coughs> is also an area that what that is bent. So maybe ultimately again, I'm killing the animal from the tail area. So shach michlal shazakuf ba'inon v'ha shach va'umetu. So say, here's the difference. Shach means at time it's bending and at times it's straight up, as opposed to the tail which is always bent over. The imam me azno. Maybe it's from the ear. So we'll say an ear is a good example. An ear sometimes is straight up and other times is bent over. So maybe you shech the animal from the ear. So the Gemara says, Ba'inan dam hanefesh veleka. See, here's the problem. If you cut the animal from the ear, you need the cut of shechita to ultimately again extract the lifeblood. If you cut the animal by the ear, you're not extracting the lifeblood. Well, why don't you say, Ve'ima dekara va'azil ad dam hanefesh? So I want to say the following, maybe you begin the cut by the ear, but you literally bring the cut from the ear all the way down to the throat. Maybe that's how you shecht an animal. And as well say, remember, if you're going with this definition of that shachat, means mimakum shashach sham chito, from the place where it's bent over, that's where you go and you cleanse it, right? You cleanse it, so maybe it's from the ear. Start from the ear and cut all the way to the throat, to which the Gemara says, Visu shehia drasa the chaloda hagrama viikar minolam. I will say furthermore, the Gemara asks, from where do we know all of the psulim of shchita? Right? From where do we know all the disqualifications of shchita? To which the Gemara says, you're right. Ella Gemara, Ella Gemara. I will say. See, interestingly enough, the way I know the psulim, the invalidations for shchita, 
is a Gemara. Gemara means a tradition, a Mesorah. Right? You have a Mesora handed down from Har Sinai that these things, these five things are the invalidations for, for Shechita. Therefore, the Gemara says, Shechita min hatzavar nami Gemara. To which the Gemara says, the fact that we shecht from the neck, that is also part of our oral tradition. That is also part of our Mesora. So both say, this actually is an incredible Gemara. So the Gemara now is suggesting that Halach Lamaisa, the fact that we shecht from the neck as opposed to some other part of the body, is actually not learned out from a Pasuk. But rather, instead, it's what we call a Gemara. It's a Mesora. It's an oral tradition that we have, which I want to say, to be clear, Mesora also means that it's Doraisa, right? But it's Tarsha Ba'peh as opposed to Tarsha Bichsav. So there is no Pasuk. Right? There is no particular, there is no particular Pasuk that points us. Rather, again, this is our Misora. Okay? Who cry Lamai Asa. So, so here's the problem. Not the problem. So what do I do with this Pasuk? Right? What, what does, so, obviously, um, I could learn out from this Pasuk something. V'shachat is Ben Abakar. Torah is clearly telling me how to slaughter. What do I learn out from this? The Shavye Gistra. So what it teaches me is that when shechting an animal, I do not go ahead and cut it into two pieces. Look at Rashi for just a moment. It's, it's Rashi almost right, right exactly across. To the Shavi Gistra, Shalo Yachtoch Kol Hamafrekes Lishnai. The Rebbe said, ultimately, again, when shechting the animal, you should not decapitate the animal. Shechita doesn't require you to what? Shechita doesn't require you to cut through the neck, cut through the backbone, and totally remove the head from the body of the animal. The Haki Mashma Chito Hotsias Damo Visu Lo. Because we'll say the lashon of chito, clean it out, means extract the blood. But that's all you have to do. So interesting enough, what we have over here is this incredible partnership. On one hand, the Mesorah teaches me that shechita is done from the neck. The Pasek teaches me that shechita does not require decapitation. Rather, all shechita requires ultimately is what? Is the cutting of the neck to remove the blood, but does not require me, excuse me, the Pasek teaches me that I do not have to decapitate the animal. Good. Rav Yemer Amar, Amar Kras. So also Rav Yemer learns out Shechita Minat Saber, Shechita from the neck, from a different Pasek. Vizavachto. The Pasek says, You shall offer Mimokum Shezov Chito. Both say, From the place where the blood flows out, that is where you should break it. Right? Chito, literally in this context, means break it. Right? From the place where the blood flows out, that is where you should cut the animal. So therefore, Rav Yemer is understanding that to mean the neck. My mashmo, the high chito lasho de mitbaru, was for whatever the lashon of chito means to break. Dixiv, altira va altichas. Because the Pasuk says, do not be afraid and do not be broken. I veima me chotmo. Say that you shek the animal from its nose. Here both say, remember the nose is also a place where stuff flows out. In this case, it's mucus of the animal. But no, but stuff flows out from the nose. Maybe that's where shechita takes place. This is the Gemara says, Zav ayede chitui ba'inon v'hai zav me'elavu. But say, we need to do shechita in a place where, where, where liquid, bodily fluids flow as a result of the cut. Not a place in the body where bodily fluids flow on their own. Apparently the animal constantly has a runny nose. That's on its own. Right? Shechita has to be in a place where the cut creates the flow, <coughs> i.e. by the neck, which creates the blood flow. So the Gemara says, Ve'ima me'libo. We'll say, why don't you say that maybe you should shecht the animal from its heart? So you both said the heart is obviously a, an organ which has a lot of blood. If you stab the animal in the heart and you kill it that way, there'll be an incredible amount of blood which comes out. Maybe that's where shechita takes place. Vesu, furthermore, says the Gemara, Shehiya, Jrasa, Chalada, Hagrama, Ikur, Minlal. Furthermore, again, I both said, from where do I learn all of the other psulim of shechita? Rather, El Gemara. Rather, I both say the Gemara is like it said before, the Gemara says the psulim of Shrita are learned out from a Gemara, are part of an oral tradition. Right? They're part, they're part of the Mesora. So the Gemara says, Shrita minat savar, nami Gemara. So ultimately, again, the Gemara will say, so we, we end up kind of back at the same place where we ended up before, which is the concept of Shrita minat savar, the concept of shechting an animal at the neck, is a Gemara. Ultimately, again, is part of our Mesora. Ukrai, ukra lemai asa. And what does the Pasek come for, Abosai? The Shavye Gistra. Ultimately, again, so I will say that I should not cut the animal in half, decapitate it. So, again, we're, we're ending up the same exact place as we were before, which is the concept of Shrita Minat Savar 
is a misora. It's part of our oral tradition. The psukim that we're quoting over here, although I'm not learning out the ikra halacha of shechita minat savar from these psukim, what I am learning out is what? What I am learning out halacha lamaisa is that the animal should not be decapitated. And I will say, by the way, if you want to shech the animal by decapitating its head, are you allowed to do so? You can, you can. The Gemara is just telling me, the Pesukim are teaching me that I do not have to. I will say, obviously, cutting off the head is a much bigger avoda than shechita. Right? Shechita just requires me for, let's say, a behemoth to cut through the rove of the two simanim. Cutting off the head is a much bigger thing. So, the, so, so shechita menat savar is a masora. The Pesukim come along to teach you that all they need is the cutting of the two simanim. I do not need to cut off the head. Was like gistera, by the way. We've seen that of our gistera means cutting something into two, cutting something into two distinct pieces. To be Rabbi Shmuel Tana, so we'll say to be Rabbi Shmuel have a different source. Tana v'shachat al tikri v'shachat ella v'sachat. What do I learn from here? Mimakum shesach chito. We will say from the first place sach literally means like like to converse, right? From the place where the animal makes noise, right? Converses. That's where you should go ahead and cleanse it, right? Or cut it. So we'll say, so what is that a reference to? The throat. The throat from where the animal makes noise. The ema milashono. So why don't they say maybe I should shek the animal start, starting with its tongue, since the tongue is used ultimately, again, I guess, for the articulation of sound as well. But you know, dam hanefesh vileka, because we'll say shrita requires lifeblood, and the tongue obviously does not possess lifeblood. I ve ema dekara vaozil ad dam hanefesh. Maybe I should start by the tongue and cut down ultimately again to the source of lifeblood of the animal. Visu, furthermore, shehia, drasa, chalada, hagrama, ve'ikur minayin. Furthermore, again, from where do I know all the psulim of shrita? Elo gimara. Rather, we'll say the gimara says, I learn out all the psulim from gimara, from an oral tradition. Shrita minat saver nami gimara. So ultimately, again, sh- the fact that shrita takes place from the neck is also again a gimara. Ukra lemai asa. I. So what does the pasuk come to teach me? The lashavi gistra. So we'll say same thing over and over and over, which is everyone is winding up in the same place. That halacha lemaisa shrita minat saver is a gimara, and all of them are just using these different psukim to teach me that I do not need to decapitate the animal. Vitana maisa lemahacher. What's another source? The sanya. From where do I know that shechita is from the neck? Excuse me. So we'll say so by so this is by Krabanos. The pasuk says that the bnei aron the sons of aron kahanim, will go ahead and arrange the sacrificial parts on the altar. And we'll say so fine. So remember, nesachim just means all the sacrificial parts. The pasuk then goes on to say what. The pasuk goes on to say, "Es harosh ve es hapader," and this includes the head and the fats. So, why does the pasuk need to single out the head and the fats? If you already just told me that the sons of iron will arrange all the sacrificial parts, obviously, what's included in sacrificial parts? The head and the fats. So says the Gemara, "Shein tamulom es harosh es hapader." Pasuk doesn't need to single out the head and the fats. Ma tamulom es harosh ve es hapader. So why does the pasuk say the head and the fats? Vhalorosh upader bichla kol hanesachim hayu. We'll say the head and the fats were included in general in all of the sacrificial parts. Lama yotzu? Why were they singled out? Lefi shenamar because the pasuk says vehifshit es haola venisach. We'll say the pasuk says you shall go ahead and skin the ola and cut it up into parts. Ainly ella nesachim. We'll say, I only know about sacrificial parts that which are skinned, which are skinned. We'll say, how do I know that also the head, which has already been detached from the body, also goes ahead and gets placed on the altar? Pazik says, its head and its fast shall be arranged. Need to come as harosh shekvar hutos. Was there for the fact that the price it says that the head has already been removed from the rest of the body? Michlal de shchitim in atzavar. So we'll say if the head is going to be removed, then what does that tell me? That tells you that it must have been cut off at the neck. Vitana pasach berosh. So we'll say so that's the raya that shchitas min atzavar from the fact that the that the pasach over here. Excuse me. That the price over seeks that the head 
being removed from the body indicates to me where is the point that the head is removed from the body? It's at the neck. Therefore, you see from me, this is a bit different than the previous Joshua's, but you see from me that Shechita is min hat saver. Vitana, Pasach beroshu pader, umesayim berosho pidro. They will say, interestingly enough, the Tana begins with a Lashon of Roshan Pader and ends off with different Lashonas of Rosho Pidro. Hachi Kamar, that's what it means to say. Minayim, the Rabbo, says Harosh Shekvar Hutos, will say, from where do I know that even the head, which was already detached, is still placed on the altar? Tamu Lomar, that's Harosh Resa Pader. Rosho Pidro, Lamar, he's supposed to say, so that's why I don't need the extra phrase. Rosho and Pidro. Mi Baile Lichidisanya. Rabbo, I need it for the following Braisa. Minayim, the Rosh, Upader Shekhob Milachal and Asachim. From where do I know that the Rosh and the Pader are the first items placed on the Mizbeach before all the other sacrificial parts? Talmud Lomar, Es Rosho, Ve Es Pidro, Ve Arach. Therefore, say the Pasik says the head and the fat shall be arranged. So, if this extra Lashon teaches me that the head and the fat are the first things placed on the Mizbeach. Amad Bezer Bosai. Says the Gemara, U Pader Kama the Kasav Rachman al Lamari. Bosai, why do I need the first <coughs> mentioning of fats in the Pasik? Listen to this. Mr. Gemara says, I'll tell you why. <laughs> you need it for the following drasha. Keitsa to Osem. Rabbi say, when arranging the head and the fats on the Mizbech, how do you arrange them? <laughs> you place the fats over the base hashchita, over the area of the animal's neck where the cut was made. And was it's actually quite interesting. If you look at if you look at Rashi, Rashi says Derech covered. Kishem Akriv Harosh Chofa Apader Amakom Chatoch. Maybe they should look at them. So both like where you shecht the animal, the in the neck, the the flesh itself, that area becomes stained with blood. So when putting the head on the mizbech, what they would do is they would place fat over the area of the incision. This way again, it would cover up the redness of the blood. That's the Rosho Pidro juxtaposition. You put the fat on the area of the incision right by the head. Why? Because we'll say this was considered to be a show of respect, ultimately, for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to put the carbon like this on the Mizbeach. Good. So we'll say another, another source. The high Tana Maisle Mehacham. So we'll say, I, another Tana, brought it from a different source. The Sanyo. Zos Torahs HaBehema V'Ha'of. So we'll say, this is the Torah, this is the laws of the Behema Me'of. V'chi Be'ez HaTorah Shav Sabehema V'Ha'of. It was actually quite interesting, V'Ha'of L'Behema. So in which way is a Behema similar to an Of and an Of to him? So we'll say, again, remember, the Torah, the Torah juxtaposes these two concepts. Zos Torahs HaBehema V'Ha'of. So we'll say, in which way, in which way, is an oaf and a behema similar? So watch this behema. So first of all, let's discuss the, the the dissimilarities, right? What is dissimilar? On one hand, behema matame b'magu b'masa. We both say behema under certain circumstances, right? Has the ability to convey toma b'magu through touching and with masa with carrying. On the flip side, oaf ain't no matame b'magu b'masa. We both say an oaf cannot convey toma through touching and carrying. On the flip side, Of Matami Begada Mesablia, both say the way an oaf conveys tumma is if you go ahead and you swallow an oaf tame. The moment that oaf is bebase hablia is in the throat, it conveys tumma to clothing that you're wearing. On the flip side, behema in matame abagada base hablia, both say behema doesn't have the ability to convey tumma through consumption. So if that's the case, beza toru shafsa behema la oaf. So I'll say in what way, in what way is behema like oaf? And what are they, obviously the Pasik is juxtaposing them, which is telling me that they are the same or there's some type of similarity. Where is the similarity? So I'll say here we go. Loma Lacha Ma Behema Bishita Af of Bishita. Both say the similarity between Behema and Of is that both are subject to the laws of Shita. So Zos Torah Sabehema Vaov teaches me that Allah Khalamai say again they are similar that they both require Shita. Ah, so we'll say Daf Chav Zayin on the base 27b, right across in Tosas Teda. 27b Tosas, right across in Tosas Teda. So the Gemara says, Ah, once you've established this similarity, Imal Lahalon Berov Shnayim, Af Kam Berov Shnayim. So we'll say now they're going to tell me that they both require Shrita. 
Maybe I'll say they both have the same shechita. Just like a behemoth requires what? The majority of two simonim. Maybe a bird also requires the majority of two simonim. Talmud Lomar, zos. Therefore, we'll say the Pasuk says, zos toras ha behemoth va'ov. The zos, we we'll say, comes to limit. Zos, Rashi points out, is a mute. Right is a limiting is a limiting word coming to teach me that as much as behima and of share a commonality that they're both chayiv and shchita, right? Nevertheless, there is a limiting factor in that what, and that of only requires two one simon, whereas behima requires two simon. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer, be'ezet tarah shav sa behima la of yof la behima. So Rabbi Lazar does says a little bit differently. In what way is behima like an of and of like a behima? Lomar lecha ma of hechshelo minat savar. Oh, mostly what's the commonality? The commonality is not only in shechita, but just like a behemoth requires shechita min from the front of the neck, so to of also requires shechita from the front of the neck. Imal, I'm sorry, I, just the opposite, I should say that. Just as of, see, I both say, here's the difference. By of, I know explicitly that of requires shechita from the neck. Where do I know that from? Where do I know that from? From Karbanos. From Karbanos, so I'll say just like Ov requires Shechita from the neck, so to Behim requires Shechita from the neck. What's the problem with that Limud? Imal lahalon mimul oref, afkan mimul oref. Now both say it's true that we've established biblically that a bird requires Shechita from the neck, but from what part of the neck? The back of the neck. So maybe I'll say just like the bird requires Shechita from the back of the neck, so to what? Behim also requires Shechita from the back of the neck. Talmud Lomar, umalak es rosho, Mimul arpo velo yavdil. We'll say therefore the pasuk says umalak es rosho. You shall go ahead and do malika on its head. Rosho shall ze mimul oref vein rosho shall acher mimul oref. We'll say the fact that the Torah phrases it in the possessive, it is only the rosh of this one, i.e. the bird, which is cut from the back. But ultimately, again, the head of this one, i.e. the behemoth, is not cut from the back. So we'll say, so bottom line with the Gemara saying over here, we have different drushas, but it seems to be the bottom line is the equation between, or I should say, the, the juxtaposition of Of and Behima seems to be telling me that Halach and both require Shechita, although the details of those Shechitos will be a bit different. For Behima two Simanim, for Of one Simon, for Of in a sacrificial sense, from the back of the neck as opposed to Behima from the front of the neck. Rabbi Eliezer, hi Zos, my other day. So we'll say, what does Rabbi Eliezer do with this word Zos? Ilav Zos, to which Rabbi Eliezer will say, if it were not for that word Zos, Hava Amino, Ma Ov Besimen Echad, Af Behim Besimen Echad. So we'll say, without the Zos, I would have thought that just as Ov is shechted with one simen, so to Behima should be shechted with one simen. So remember again, Zos is a limiting word. Teach me that although they share commonalities in terms of their shechita, they are treated differently. Therefore, Kasev Rachman Azos, the Apostle the Apostle comes along and teaches me Zos, Zos Taras Abehema. Um, what was the Apostle? Zos Taras Abehema Va'ov, teaching me that again, Behema has something unique over Of, i.e. that Behema has two simonim, whereas Of only has one. So the Gemara says, Tani Bar Kafra, Zos Taras Abehema Va'ov, this is the Torah of the Behema and the Of, Hetil HaKosov, Laov bein behema ledagim. So this is actually quite interesting. So the Torah goes ahead and places of between between behema and dagim. So, so remember the pasuk reads as follows: Zos Torah sa behema vaof v'chol nefesh hachaya haromeses b'mayim. This is the law of the behema, the of, and every living creature in the water, which refers to fish. So the Gemara knows something very interesting. So behema, so oath is placed in between behemus and fish. What does this come to teach me? So the Gemara says, lechayvo bishnei simanim So let's listen to this. So now, when trying to figure out the halachos of birds, we're a little bit stumped. Why? Watch this. So lechayvo bishnei simanim to tell me that a bird, for shrita purposes, you should have to cut two simanim iafsha. You can't say that. Why? Shekvar hokosh l'dagim. Because we also remember, again, the placement of birds in between behemoths and dogim tells me what, at least according to the Gemara right now, tells me that ultimately, again, the bird shares qualities with both. So to tell me on one hand that you should have to shecht two simanim in a bird, you can't say that why, 
because it shares some type of similarities to a fish. Lepotro beloklum. Therefore, to say it's like a fish, Allah says, we're going to see fish do not require any type of formal shrita, right? You could grab a fish out of the water and just bite its head off, right? There's, there's no formal shrita that ultimately, again, or nor, no, nor type of formal killing that is, that is required with fish. So to say that a bird's like a fish, and to pat from any type of shrita, below you can't do that either. Why? Because we also remember, again, birds are ultimately, again, compared to behema. Hawkate side, so we'll say, so what's the in between nature of birds? Hakshero Bisimin Echad. But so that's where we arrive at the concept that a bird is nitter with one simon. So on one hand, it's like an animal that it requires, like an animal that it requires, we'll say Santa Bashrita, but yet its comparison to a fish tells that it doesn't require a full shrita. What's the in-between nature? I've also said the in-between nature is halacha lamaisa, one simon. One simon. Dogim tlapane shrita in the I've said now the Gemara says it's really quite fascinating. So now what you've just told me is that fish require, right? Fish do not require any type of shrita. So from where do I know that? From where do I know that fish do not require any type of shrita? I mean, Allah, ilay ma mishum dechsev hatzon ubakar yishachit lahem so also maybe you want to say that it's from the phrase so also this is actually remember this is by the slav right when when Yisrael wants meat what do you want from me even if you shecht the tzon and the bakar the sheep and the cattle and even if you collect all of the fish of the sea so most right the is picking up on over here is as follows when it comes to animals, the lotion that's used is what? Is shrita. When it comes to fish, the lotion that's used is asifa, collection. So what do you see from here? Fish do not require any type of form of shrita. Apparently, collection of the fish is enough. Ba'asifa ba'amasagilu. We'll say apparently collecting the fish by themselves, right, without form of shrita is enough. So what we'll say is maybe you'll say, so what do you see from here? You see, remember also that fish do not require shechita; they just require asifa. We we'll say, what does asifa mean? What does asifa mean? So we we'll say, asifa is not even necessarily a halachic matter; it's a practical matter. You can't eat the fish unless, of course, you what? Catch it, right? Just a practical matter of advice. You can't eat enough, no nothing, no eating, no lunch if you don't catch your fish. So we we'll say, so therefore, again, asifa is enough. So you must say, but if that's the case, gabi slav dixiv. By us, we'll say first why line of Zainam of days. But we'll say, into it by Slav, what does it say? By us, we'll It says they collected the Slav. So we'll say, maybe you'll say over here also, it says collection by Slav. You're going to say, so we'll say well, Slav is a bird. Maybe there's no Shrita there either. To which the Gemara says, So we'll remember again, you just said before that birds are both side, you cannot go ahead and say it doesn't require Shrita at all because remember, it is juxtaposed to Behema. So to which the Gemara says, Hasam by Slav, Lok Siva Siv Makum Shrita Dachrini. Hachak Siva Siv Makum Shrita Dachrini. So here's the difference. By originally, again, by the, by the Slav, ultimately, again, Asifa is not written by Shrita. There's no mention of Shrita in that Pasuk. Therefore, because there's no mention of Shrita in the Pasuk of Asifa by the Slav, we understand that Asifa means Shrita. The difference is that by Moshe, when he was speaking about the fish, Asifa was mentioned right after Shrita. When Asifa and Shrita are mentioned in the same Pasuk, then what? Then Shrita means Shrita, and Asifa means what? Not Shrita, just catching. When Asifa is just mentioned by itself without Shrita, then you understand Asifa to be synonymous with Shrita itself. Therefore, the Slav requires Shrita. So the Gemara goes by to Darish Ovid Gila. So Darish over Galila. So it says, so as a per- person, over Galila literally means a man who is traveling in the Galil. Unnamed source. Those who are traveling in the Galil said the following Behema, Shenevres Meleaba, Shech Sher Well, this is actually an interesting piece of Agatha, which we'll, we'll focus on more tomorrow. But the Behema, which was created from earth, from the Abasha, Hechsher B'Shnei Siman. Both say, in order to shecht it properly, to eat it, you need to cut two Simonim. Dogim, Shinivrom, and Amayim, Hechsher B'Veloklum. Fish, which were created from the water, can be eaten without any type of Shrita. Of, Shinivrom, and Arakak, both say, birds, which were created from the mud. So both say, what does mud represent? It represents, again, an in-between state between the earth and the water. Hechsher B'Simen Echad. 
ultimately, again, their heksher is with one simon. So we'll say, so you have animals created from the earth, two simonim, fish created from the sea, nothing, birds which created from the in between the rock up, the mud, one simon. Aro Shmuel Kaputka, Teda, Shay Ophosishan Kaskeses Braglem Kidagan. We'll say, so Shmuel Kaputka says, because how do you know that birds are from this in-between state? Because birds have scale like some birds, have scale like webbed feet that ultimately again are like, like fish-like. So because they come from the mud, which is a combination of the water and the earth, they have almost certain fish-like qualities. Va'od shal, va'od shal. say, furthermore, they ask another question. Because of Echad Omer, Va'yomer Elokim, Yishritzu amayim sheres nefesh chayo, Va'of yo'ofev. So we'll say one Pasuk says, let the waters, Yishritzu amayim sheres nefesh chayo, let the waters teem with living things, Va'of yo'ofev, and birds will fly. What does that show you? Alma, mimayim ever. We'll say this seems to indicate, this Pasuk indicates that birds were created from the water. Uksiv, Va'yitzar shem Elokim min ha'adama, Kol chaya sasa the best kol of Hashem al me arivu. But then the second pasuk says that the birds were created from the earth. So we'll say which one was it? Are the birds created from the water or the birds created from the earth? Which one? Amar lo he said to him min arakak nivru. Ultimately, again, the birds were created from the mud. So we'll say that's how we synthesize the two pasukim. One pasuk says from the water. One pasuk says from the earth. The answer is really both. So remember again, so this is, this is Roshmo Kapotka, right? So he said, he saw his students, Roshmo saw his students looking at one another. So ultimately, you don't like my answer, literally, you, I, I, I pushed aside my enemies with straw, which means you don't like the answer that I gave. You feel it's a little bit too weak. So the Gemara says, In reality, Roshmo says, the birds were created from water. So we'll say, if that's the case, why were they subsequently brought to Adam? Likros lahem shem. Ultimately, again, we'll say, the Pasuk is really referring to the idea that the Kodesh Baruch Hu brought all of the animals to Adam to name them. Really, in fact, water was, excuse me, birds were actually created from the water. The second Pasuk, we'll say, which speaks about, again, we'll say, that Pasuk is not really telling me that the birds were created from the earth. The point of that Pasuk is to tell me that even the birds were brought before Adam to ultimately name them. So the Gemara says, Others here show a different Lashon over here. Amar Hegmon. So I say he was actually referring to he was he was assigned to some Roman nobleman, and in the first lashon he said back to his students, "Mishum dechsev al vayitzer." Ultimately, the Bible say because the pasuk says "al vayitzer." I've heard Mishum vayitzchak when pinchas. So I say so far. So ultimately, again, so I say so. The point over here the Gemara is bringing down is that halacha lemaisa, halacha lemaisa. It appears. That the majority opinion is that the birds were created min harakak. The birds were created ultimately again from the mud, which I will say, interestingly enough, has explains why the two psukim, one referring ultimately to the birds being created from the earth, one for referring to the birds being created from the waters. It's really both. It also helps us in understanding why, in terms of Hilchos Shechita, the birds are mentioned in between the animals behemoths and dogim because they occupy this interesting in-between state in creation and in shrita. They have shrita like a behemoth in certain respects, but they also have to be like a dog. So what's the middle ground? A bird gets one simon as opposed to two. Good. So the Gemara says, well, say that now we begin an interesting sugya. So the Gemara says, there is no obligation to shecht an oaf. It will say, so midoraisa, an oaf does not require shrita. <coughs> Where do we know that from? Bishafach. <coughs> As the Bible says, the Pasuk says, listen to this. It says, V'ish ish mi b'nei Yisrael, u'min ha'ger ha'gar v'socham, asher yitzud, asher yotzud, tzeit chaya o oaf, asher ye'achel, v'shafach es damo. So we'll say, this is actually quite an amazing drasha. So the Pasuk says, if you will go ahead and you will hunt a bird, v'shafach es damo. Shafach es damo means what? You shall spill its blood. So as I say, so the Gemara is dashing from this that what? A bird does not require shrita. 
Rather, right. again, all it, you have to kill it. You can't eat it alive, right? Because that, that's Eber Menachai. But it just requires some type of killing. But lav daf koshchit. Shnei mar v'shafach b'shvicha ba'al nasagi. I both say pouring, spilling its blood in some way, i.e. killing it in some way, is more than enough. Ihochi chayenami. I will both say, now remember, that Pasuk makes, makes reference to an oath and a chaya. I will say chaya is a non-domesticated animal. Simplest example of that is like a deer, right? So I'll say, that's the case. Chaya is also interesting. same Pasuk. Chaya shouldn't require shchit either. Iskish lepsulim ikdash. I will say, here's the difference. Is that a chaya is compared ultimately, again, to psuli hamukdashim. To invalid sacrifices, as we'll see a little bit later, actually, really tomorrow. So the fact that Chaya is compared to Psulim Mikdashin tells us that just like sacrificial animals require Shrita, so to a Chaya requires Shrita as well. I, Of Nami Iskish the Behema. But one second, we just got finished saying that a bird is compared to a Behema. Tichsef Zostrasa Behema Vah Of. But say, so the fact that Of is compared to a Behema should say that what? Just like a Behema requires Shrita, so to an Of requires Shrita. I, Hoxiv Vishafach Hastamo. I will say, but here's the problem. By Of it says, you shall spill its blood, which seems to indicate to us what? That even Shvicha Ba'am, or spilling of the blood itself without Shrit, is going to be good enough. Umay Chazis, the Shadji Le Alof, Shadji Achaya. I will say, I don't understand. How do you know? The Pasik mentions both Of and Chaya. And it's how do you know that Vishafach only refers to Of and not to Chaya? To which the Gemara says, Mistabra Mishum de Solik Mine. Because I will say, ultimately, again, the last item mentioned is the item that is juxtaposed. Remember again, the Pasuk says, Asher Yatsud Tseid Chaya O'Uf, Asher Ye'achel V'shafach. V'shafach is mentioned closest to Of and not to Chaya, which would seem to indicate to us that Halacha Lamaisa, the ability just to kill the animal, not through proper Shrita, but just some type of Shricha, ultimately again is going to be enough for Of, but will not be enough ultimately again for Chaya. All right, so we'll stop over here for today. We'll pick up Emirat Hashem at the Nesve tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And we'll say tomorrow is a, tomorrow is a Sunday schedule. Sunday schedule.